star drive and gravity part five. So how does the baryon perform its trick? Clinging gravitons into open space. As shown earlier in the original star drive, most gravitons bounce through like in Newton's cradle. Many of those aren't out of the way in time receiving an ass kick from one of the up quarks. Let me show you. This is the baryon spinning around. A bit more light, like this. Better. Baryon spinning around. One comes in, hits it, they exchange places. But now it's not out of the way in time and it receives an ass kick from the next one. Let me show you on the screen. Routing comes in, two times the speed of light. Uh, I'll explain later why. And these ones are turning to the speed of light, rotating, revving. So when they hit, the combined speed is two times speed of light, two times speed of light, Pythagoras, about 2.9, 2.8 times the speed of light. Um, because it's a high impact, they bounce through. Um, this pink one who was spinning now gets to shot, be shot out. And the brown one takes its place and becomes part of this baryon. And there you go. Brown part of the baryon. The other one shoots out and breaks free. Um, however, it's not out of the way in time to avoid a collision with the blue one. So the blue one hits it, but since they're both balls, and since this one is already on the way out, it's a very mild impact. Low impact, no exchanging places. High impact, exchanging places, low impact, not exchanging places. But it hits it, which means this one gets propelled into space. Velocity a bit higher than two times the speed of light. Action minus reaction means the baryon propels down to Earth. And the rotation gave energy to this movement, so it rotates a bit slower. But there's a way to replenish this. and. That's why V speed and V speed is equal. I'll show you how this happens. There you go. Gravitons come in from all sides. Up, down, doesn't matter. From side, left, right. Let's take one who comes with the same direction. This one has slowed down. Now this one comes in and hits it. They exchange energy. The impact is low. 2C, 1.5C, only half a C impact. So they don't exchange places, they only exchange some energy. So the energy gets transferred to the wheel and the gravity moves on a bit slower than it did. Now, if a gravity comes from the other side, from the opposite side, you might think, well, it will come to a standstill, but no, such is not the case. You've seen a high impact, and this is a high impact, 1.5 times speed of light plus 2 times the speed of light, three and a half times the speed of light, high impact, they do exchange places, they bounce through. So now the brown one is part of, comes part of the wheel, and the blue one shoots out that direction. So when this happens against the rotation, there's no difference. Turning one and a half C, still doing one and a half C, moving two and a half C, still moving two and a half C. The only exchange places is like nothing has happened. Which tells us if a graphon hits us from in the right direction, it brings it up to speed. When it comes in the wrong direction, there's no influence whatsoever. And this is why if a baryon has a spin going one way, it keeps its spin for centuries to come. Gravity is often considered a weak force, such is not the case. Gravity is a slight imbalance between push and pull. Push means gravitons bouncing off down to upland again. Pull means gravitons bouncing through and getting a kick in the butt by the spinning baryons, as just has been demonstrated in this drawing. So now this is how, it's, how gravity works. And from this point, explaining the inner works of our universe is a cakewalk.